If you're contacting underage girls and you have a fake couch surfing profile where you say only one person can stay and it's on a little couch over there and it's two minutes on the edge of my bed, I'm gonna watch if I can sleep. That's, that's, that's bullshit. Again, where are you getting this nonsense in your head, you absolute crime situation description? Yeah, where does he get that crime scene description from? Remember psychological projection and how it tend to be very specific? It turns out Harley has a video of his own hotel room on his own channel. Check out inside. So this is what I pay here in Thailand, Chiang Mai. I uh, pay $30 a week for this. Did you catch that? Let's watch that one more time. So check out inside. Now here's where things start to get disturbing. Because in the beginning of this video, there's a teenage girl cycling up the driveway to his hotel room. Now when I first saw this girl, I thought she was around 12 to 14 years of age. She looks very young. Um, I've blurred her face because it's a girl Harley has had what he calls adult consensual sex with. But don't, don't take my word for it. His ex-girlfriend shared a massive Tumblr post with a lot of private message between the two of them where he talks about this girl. So as you can see, she was an 18 year old virgin. And look at what his ex-girlfriend said that he manipulated her. This is exactly what he accused Isil of. And his ex-girlfriend has also mentioned this girl in other places. What's interesting is that Harley in the same comment section claimed that this was a fake account. But if you take a closer look at this account, we can clearly see that this is not a fake account. So this is the guy who describes himself as a teacher of the community who protects young women from sexual predators. Yet here he is manipulating teenage virgins to sleep with him. And just to be clear, this is not the same girl who came forward in my previous video. These are two separate teenagers. I did not know what I was dealing with. And it's not very comfortable for me to tell the story, to be honest, but I really feel I need to tell it. He emailed, messaged a lot of young girls, you know, a lot of girls in my community. He um, sent me messages being like, are you back in Chiang Mai? Where are you staying? Are you going to Chiang Mai? This is Dr. Eber writing this. And there's a few other follow-ups where you're staying in Sarah. He started talking about me a lot. Like he started complimenting me a lot. He started talking a lot about how, about what I looked like. It made me feel a bit uncomfortable. Just talking all sorts of shit up to him. Creepy shit. And the next day he asked me if there was any free rooms at my apartment building. Now that made me feel a bit weird because I only just met him, I hardly knew the guy and he was wanting to move into my apartment building suddenly. So this is a guy who's creeping around with teenage girls. The day after he messaged me again saying, do you want to meet up tonight? I can come to your room. And at that point I felt quite uncomfortable honestly because you know he's like 40 years old, I'm 18 then that's just, that's really, really, really disgusting and disappointing that you'd support someone like this who has no positive intention to be in community other than harass and cyber bully women, young women. Yeah, so I, I wasn't sure what he wanted from me. Um, so I kind of just tried to wiggle myself out of it a little bit. I kind of, I think I said I was tired and I was going for a ride the next day, so I said maybe we can meet another time or whatever. Um, but then he said to me that he, it was only about, like he only wanted to talk to me about my camera and I shouldn't worry and I was like, oh, okay. So like he doesn't have any bad intentions, so it's okay. And I kind of trusted him. So he came to my room and that night it was actually okay because um, we just talked and I tried to keep my distance from him. Then, because I trusted him after that, I was like, oh, okay, so he actually just wants to be friends with me. I was looking up to him as this like community leader um, who was doing great things, I thought, at the time. I'm the school teacher. This Road to Fort Bike Fest in Chiang Mai is my little school group. All right? Yeah. So this is during my okay. day, the teacher. Kids, this is what you should eat. Go ride your bike, go to bed, it's late. I was coming in on Facebook. Hey, what are you up to? Where are you staying? And yeah, so then the day after he wanted to see me again and he wanted me to come to his room and I was like, okay, we'll just, we'll just hang out again because we're friends now. 
and we started talking but it was a bit different because he he started making a lot of like sexual comments and he really tried to direct the conversation towards sex which I felt a bit uncomfortable with again because he was so much older than me and I hardly knew him as well creepy shit I kind of tried to just brush it off and he was asking me things like if if someone's like really into you what do you think they should do and at that point I was realizing that he was like directly you know talking about me and I, I tried to brush it off by saying oh, I think they should they should just like keep their distance and wait kind of like wait and see um, but he didn't so he um, he then tried to kiss me and I, I kind of stepped back and I was like I don't think we should do this like I don't think I want to do this and what was strange about that situation is he was so taken aback and almost I'm not sure confused or angry that I I said no to him yeah so I said I said I don't think we should do this and he then started asking me continuously why I didn't want to kiss him and why I wasn't attracted to him and why 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 and he just harasses him again and again and again again and again and again and going after again and again and again and again that's harassment he, he kept asking those questions and I obviously my answer in my head was that he you know you're like 40 and I'm 18 and I don't think that we should be doing this because you're like so much older than me and I don't think this is right People are just so easy man, they're so easy to manipulate, they're so easy to bullshit Look, You see it man, like most women out there, most girls, 16 to 25 year old Most, not all, most, are basic handbag wearing bitches And I kind of just said, oh I don't know, like I just don't feel good about this kind of thing Yeah he just kept asking The young girl started to feel a bit scared, she felt creeped out And he wanted to talk talk in his bedroom and then said my legs were really tight and started giving me a massage. This guy was 37 years old. He then um, tried to kiss me again. He's this uh, creeper. I wasn't really confident anymore in that situation so I kind of just let him do it. Will it fly in my community that I created that I work hard every day to fucking build? No. It will never fly. And so I don't care if people say you overreact. I would rather overreact to provide a safe community then he you know refused to use condoms I mean, I would rather overreact get in a bit of shit or whatever than have another uh situation like we had last year with certain predators coming in his actions really didn't align with that at all the way he was treating me and they exploit people basically it's a lot of actions that don't line up with a lot of their words i just didn't even question anything and i didn't realize because i didn't think someone who had such a high status and who was almost like a YouTube celebrity, I don't think someone like that could have any, you know, bad intentions. What would you do if I had your little sister, seeing you old in Thailand, getting creeped on by some guy she didn't want to talk to? I had some personal, pretty intense problems in my life then. What would you do? He followed, he saw my friend and I riding in the street of Chiang Mai. He started following us, he like cut my friend off so she was behind me. And stalk him again and again and again. It was quite scary to be honest because I was I was just by myself and I didn't I didn't know what to do. She felt unsafe. And I was like okay 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 because I just wanted to get them off me. <laughs> I, I was so scared that day honestly. A few hours later I got back home from having dinner with a few friends and the wheels of my bike were gone. This is how easy it is to steal bikes, no one's gonna do anything. Now that was a few hours after Harley got so angry at me and he knows exactly what my, which one my bike is obviously, he knows exactly where I live. There's cameras opposite our building and they probably caught the theft. And then fast forward to the next morning and someone must have gotten scared because my wheels were back. What do we do with people like that? What do we do with people like that? How do we deal with these fucking scumbags? He kept saying basically anything that he thought would hurt me the most is what he said. Like he said I was really fat and I would always be single. And if he wants to fuck around in my community, then they're going to deal with me and they're going to deal with the other guys who aren't, aren't afraid to stand up. 
So basically the whole time, even in front of the police, he was just mocking me in every way he could. He said, I hope your daddy's proud of you for sleeping with a 40 year old creep. So I'd rather overreact than underreact and let in predators. Obviously if I could go back, I would not trust him at all. And I think that's really dangerous, especially in a community like this, where you have someone like that as the community leader. I just want him out of my life and I just want to get this out there so that he can't do to other people what he did to me. My name is Dana. Currently I am a psychiatric nurse. I work with people with personality disorders and mental illness. I also worked at a domestic violence shelter where I worked with victims of all kinds of abuse. With victims of all kinds of abuse. And after Josie came forward, Harley has been cyberbullying, slandering her and trying to shame her for coming forward. And this is exactly what they accused Isla of, like cyberbullying girls and harassing them. And yet again, this is Harley's behavior. She's receiving messages from these anonymous accounts, but it's clear that this is Harley because he's using information that she has told him against her. Asking her what her ex-boyfriend thinks about this, calling her a slut, saying that nobody will, will want to be with her after this, basically just trying to shame her to want to take down the video. Here's a post on his Tumblr where he claims that she is sending him photos of herself, but if you look closely, you can see that this is Harley sending her a photo, not all the way around, it's on the right side. And Josie showed me more of this conversation and as you can see he's saying thumbnail, so he sent her this photo and told her to put it as a thumbnail. And I'm convinced this is a tactic Harley used. He approached all these teenage girls and he tell them that uh, if they do as he says they can start earning money on YouTube and stuff, so he tells them to like put this as a thumbnail, like post this, post that, do this, do that, and then he assaults them. And if they ever dare to speak up, he will go back to these videos and he will tell people, oh, look at this thumbnail they're using, oh, they're such a slut and they wanted this. But it was him all along. He made them do all of this. Here's another post where he says she's fucked her online image forever, blah, blah, blah. It's all just to shame her. And this really displays Harley's misogyny, how he looks at women as like objects that can become dirty. The only reason a real man will care about this is because he will see that she's been mistreated. In fact, I'd say her speaking up like this is a quality that real men will respect, not like insecure little boys. They will try to shame her for, for it, but uh, real men will respect her for that. It's like it takes a lot of courage for a teenager to speak up like she did in that video.